What's up, everybody? Jesse Dietrich here for another episode of the Heart of Hockey Motivation. Today, we are joined by Thatcher Demko, goaltender of the Vancouver Canucks. And I've had the privilege of training him. This is coming up on summer number five with Thatcher at Fitness Quest 10. Uh, but just an all around great guy, you know, truly, truly humble to be able to work with this guy on and off the ice. He's always pushing himself to get better. And I think in today's interview, you'll get a great sense of that. So Thatcher, thanks for joining us today, man. Yeah, man. Happy to be here. How's it going? Back in San Diego now, huh? Well, yeah. Back home, uh, when everything kind of got locked down, I was in van for a few weeks and then it looked like it was going to be a little bit longer. So my girlfriend and I rented a car and drove down the coast and uh, I've been hanging out with some family, which has been nice. So just making the most of it. A long drive, huh? Yeah, it was long. Like we've always, we've driven a bunch back, back and forth from Michigan to Boston when I was um, at BC, right. but uh, that was only about 12 hours. This one was like 20. So it was, uh, wow. it tested us for sure, but we got it done in one shot. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. I can't believe this is summer number. I think this is summer number five. We've been working together. I know, man. It's, uh, it flies by. It flies awesome. by. Yeah, when I met Thatcher, he was going into his junior year at BC. Yeah. When we met, he was rehabbing from a hip surgery that he had. Yeah, double hips. Getting them worked on, getting them rehabbed for you. You're a goalie. It's just inevitable, right? Like, most goalies get that? Uh, I'd say more and more now, just like the way the style style of play is going. Um you know, goalies are required to kind of get into those those awkward positions like the butterfly and post play at, you know, much earlier ages. So um, I think it's going to be, you know, more and more common as, as the game kind of progresses. Yeah. yeah. And since then, we've, man, we've been through so much training together each offseason. It's been really, really cool to see Thatcher go from Boston College to the NHL and playing in Utica and the AHL in between. And, you know, this guy, I've learned a lot about him. He's super dialed in with everything he does. He sets intentions, and then he takes action on it. So um, let's trace it back a little bit. What was it like growing up playing hockey in San Diego? Like, how did you get into it? I mean, hockey's not exactly yeah. your hotbed here in, in Southern California. Yeah, so my uh, grandparents on my dad's side are both from Guelph, Ontario, uh, Niagara Falls. So they were around it growing up. You know, they were hockey fans. Um, they bounced around a lot as my dad was growing up, and – when they eventually landed in San Diego, he just became a huge LA Kings fan. And uh, he had the games on TV, you know, whenever they were playing. So I remember just watching those guys growing up. And um, I don't know, I, I just, I was drawn to it right away. And uh, my dad took me out on the ice when I was three. And I guess the story goes, I just hated it. I wouldn't stop crying. And so they waited a year and took me back when I was four. And, and I kind of took off with it then. That's funny. I didn't know yeah. that. Um, did you start off as a goalie? No, I um, I was defenseman. I think I I love playing out though. Like, yeah. my like favorite part of hockey in general is like being able to like play D or like play wing. Um, obviously, I just kind of had to pick what I was best at, which was goalie, and kind of ride the wave. But I just I like switching it up every once in a while. You know, it's just kind of like playing some other sports, like I did when I was growing up, like basketball you know baseball lacrosse soccer just mixing it up is fun every once in a while I could see you as a huge shutdown demon for sure oh man just stay at home off yeah. the glass Chris you, Pat, you, you, McCray, you and Alec McRae on the D together oh, shut down. <laughs> get on the ice shut it down quick shift length get right off <laughs> skill guys out there <laughs> so funny. well um Pat has his son that's just getting into hockey now um a lot of kids watching this are about that age. Was there anything for you when you were getting started with hockey that, you know, like maybe you did a little bit differently than other players or was it just the love of the game at first or did you have it in your, your head at a young age? Like I want to try and do this for as long as I can. Yeah. So I think um, I was really naive as a little kid and I think that ended up playing a huge role for me because as I look back on it, I get that question a lot. Like, when did you think you had a chance at making the NHL? And for some reason, there was nothing to back this up at all. But I just remember even from six, seven years old, like, I just knew I was going to do it. Like, it wasn't – there was never like, oh, I'm going to try, like, see what happens. 
like just being a naive kid, I was just like, yeah, I'm, I'm going to play in the NHL for sure. And like, I think just unconsciously, I just made decisions that led me to positions where I'd have to perform to, to have the opportunity to kind of make the jump to the next level. Wow. So I, I honestly am not sure, but I've thought about that a lot. I think it was just maybe a natural disposition of, <laughs> you know, loving the game and, and wanting to be involved with it at the highest level I could. And, um, you know, watching those guys on TV, I just kind of thought that I, I could do it. I, there was definitely some confidence in the sense where regardless of where I was, uh, you know, even if I didn't make a team or, you know, I got cut or didn't get a call back, whatever it was, like, I just always knew that I'd just, all right, I'll just reroute and go a different way then. And there was never any, like, panic, um, you know, in my path to where I wanted to go. And I think that does come from a little bit of confidence. And I think that was instilled in me at a young age, just knowing that I wanted to play in the NHL and that I would eventually do it. And then every, that was kind of the foundation. And everything that kind of went on after that point was just building on top of that, if that makes sense. Yeah, that makes total sense. Absolutely. Is that how you got started playing goalie? Because you didn't start out playing goalie right away. How did you make yeah. that transition? So goalie for me, I, was, I just hated coming off the ice. Um, I remember like at big moments in the game, and keep in mind it's house league. It's, they're, <laughs> they're not important games, but to me they're everything, right? And there would be, you know, a minute left in the game, we're down a goal and I had to go sit on the bench and watch and I would just cry on the bench because I wanted to be out there. So I was like, all right, how can I fix this? And I just started playing goalie and I never came off the ice and it was great. Just stuck with it. <laughs> Dude, that's so cool. That's an awesome story right there. I love it. I love it. So once you started playing goalie, how old were you at that age? You're like what? Um, I think I was full-time goalie around 10. Okay. Okay, so 11, 12. Um, now, I, I know, I already know this story, but we've talked to the kids about goal setting. Um, what did you do as a kid setting goals for yourself? Yeah, so I, um, I think the first time I tried to move away from home, I think I was 11 or 12. Um, I wanted to go to Toronto to be in a more hockey-centric environment. Hmm. Um, and I was never good enough to make any of those teams um, so I ended up always just coming back home and playing at whatever team would take me. Uh, and then I went to a goalie camp when I was like 13 and the guy was talking about goal setting and I was just, in, I was always, you know, eager to do whatever people were telling me might help. And I ended up getting a notebook and I just wrote down everything that I wanted to do. I did one year, I think five years and 10 years. And, uh, I actually, I, so I wrote it all down and a couple years ago, my mom sent me the notebook. She found it in her garage randomly. And it was uncanny, like kind of gave me the chills where like it was a direct timeline of my entire career. And it was just like, it was insane. It was like, go to the, play, play in the USHL, which I did uh, at 15. I was the youngest guy in the league that year. And then it was go play at the US NTDP program, which I did the next year. And then it was go to Boston College, which how would I know <laughs> that I wanted to go to BC at 13? Yeah. I ended up going to BC a year early as a 17 year old. And then it was eventually make the NHL, which I was honored enough to do. Um, so it was just, it was in insane to me. And it really showed the power of, of goal setting, you know, down the line, like now I, I, I'm back into it. Right. Like I kind of got away from it a little bit, but then reading that was a, a good refresher for me for sure. That's huge. Yeah. I think when you write down goals and you set intentions, you may not be consciously thinking of it all the time, but your subconscious mind's working on it. Right. And you're going to put yourself in situations to get yourself better. Yeah. You're free. You, it's important too, for me is i I would find, and I still do, I find like when I do write goals down, like it can get lost in the everyday grind and you get into a routine of, all right, I got to go to the gym and I do my workout, get it done, whatever. But if you can remind yourself of those goals, just quickly, like look at them, you know, it takes two seconds, just remind yourself, then it gives your workout purpose. It gives your, your session on the ice purpose. And I think people that have purpose are ultimately going to just set themselves up to succeed. 100%. Yeah, whether it's in hockey or just life in general. Life in general, man, for sure. For yeah. sure. I know when I was done with hockey, I never set goals during my playing career, but afterwards, you set intentions. And um, that's something I learned from Todd. And yeah. 
this day, like I see it paying off. Um, he does it with all of his pro athletes, you know, the Drew Breeses, the Darren Sproles, those guys are all setting goals. And um, Pat and I were looking into this, but only, it's less than what, less than 2% of people ever write down their goals. And when you write down your goals, you're over 50% more likely to achieve them. Um, yeah, I think when you write them down, it makes it tangible, right? Like it makes it real. Like everyone can sit down and be like, man, I wish I had this. I'd, I'd love to be able to do this. But it's just a thought. It's not real. You can't touch it. Yeah. I feel like when you write it down, it's like, all right, this, is a, this exists now. Like this is right in front of me. I got to go get it. And yeah. so I, I find it super important to, to write it down anywhere, you know, note card, notebook, whatever. Absolutely. Absolutely. It makes it black and white. It makes it yeah, exactly.